Hello, this is Nick McPhee, and I'm going to do an example of using functions as a way of capturing repetition and extracting it so that we reduce repeated logic and repetition in our programming. And this is going to be based on an example of this function pyramid, which is program 13 from page 49 of Introduction to Computing and Programming in Python, a Multimedia Pro Approach, the fourth edition, by Mark Guzdial and Barbara Erickson. Um, so this function um, takes a character, pyramid, and it prints those characters in a pyramid shape. Now, notice the bottom line's off a little bit. We'll fix that in a second. That's actually a arguably a mistake in uh, the program as provided. Uh, the last line is always going to be off a little bit. It's more noticeable if you use a font, a monospace font, where every character is the same width. If you use a font where some characters are very thin and some characters are wider, it's less clear that this mistake exists. Um, but, so we got a perfectly good function here. What does it do? It takes a character as an input, and that allows us to specify what kind of character we want to print in the pyramid. Here I did uh, an at, and I got a pyramid of ats. Here I did an x, and I got a pyramid of x's. So we can specify what kind of character we want. Then we define space to be a space. Okay, so that's just giving us a name for that character. And then we have these five print statements that print four spaces, so four spaces, and then one instance of the character, and then three spaces, and three instances of the character, and two spaces, oops, sorry, two spaces, and five instances of the character, one space, seven instances of the character, no spaces, nine instances of the character. So each time it's printing fewer spaces, and more of the character. So we get the wider rows, but they're also, we need to reduce the number of spaces in front of them so that instead of having a straight edge and then just longer rows, um, we get the desired pyramid effect, okay? So that all works, like this clearly functions, but I think that the, the relationship between these numbers at this point, it seems kind of arbitrary and somewhat magical. And so the first thing I want to do is try to revise this definition so that those these numbers seem a little less out of the blue. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make the lines more uniform so that they are more like each other. Um, because they're almost kind of, they almost have a pattern, but they don't quite all follow the pattern. In particular, like if we look at these three in the middle, they all have the property that there is a print, some number times space, so some repetition of spaces, and some number times char, some repetition of ch characters. Um, and all three of these have that property. And in fact, the number of spaces goes down by one, and the number of copies of the character goes up by two every time. And the up by two makes, well, the down by one makes sense. We want one fewer space every time because the next row is shifted over one from the previous row. And adding two characters makes sense because we're actually adding a character on the left and the right compared to what the previous row of characters was. So every time we're adding two more characters, so we go from three to five to seven, and three to two to one. But then the first row and the last row look different in some way. And so can we make them not look different? And the answer is yes. If we think about the pattern here, seven, five, three, what would be the next value? It would be one. So we could say one times char here, and notice that one times char is the same as char. Char would be one copy of the character. One times char 
gives us one copy of the character. So if we say down here, 1 times x is just x, right? So saying we want one copy, one repetition of a character is the same as just getting the character. So it's okay to replace char here with 1 times char. Now down here, if we think about it, we've got 9 out here, and that fits the pattern. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. We're going up by 2 every time. But what do we do here? Well, what's the pattern? 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 would be the next thing. Hmm. So the question is, what, if, what happens if we say 0 times a character? Well, let's find out. 0 times x is just the empty string, which is good. That's what we want. We actually would want the empty string here and 9 characters. So we can actually put... 0 times space, comma, and we'll get rid of a bunch of these spaces I added. Oops, there we go. Um, and that says we want four spaces, three spaces, two spaces, one space, zero space. So we're going one fewer space every time. And then the number of characters goes up by two. One, three, five, seven, nine. And now it's sort of clearer what the pattern is because we have been explicit about how many spaces and how many characters at every stage instead of using just char to mean one character and having no string to mean zero spaces. Okay, so let's load this and see if this works. Oops, I need to save it. Yep, save and load. Now if I say pyramid x, woohoo! I still get a pyramid. In fact, I get a working pyramid. That last line problem seems to have gone away. That's cool. Let's try another couple. Oops, oh, I typoed. Um, so it works with that. And I don't know, let's try W. It works with those. So yeah, it seems to work. And that last row now works. Why is that? That's because we added no spaces, which seems weird, because adding no spaces shouldn't have done anything. The real trick is the comma here. It turns out, so before we had this. We just had 9 char. Turns out the comma adds a space between the things that you print. So if we say print 3, 4, 5, it puts a space in between the things that we print if we put a comma there. So if we say three um, bats, comma, five, we get three space bats, space five, not three bats, five, all run together. And so all of these commas here, we're inserting a kind of hidden space. Because there was no comma here, there was no extra space, and so the last line was shifted over a little bit. Um, and when we switched to saying empty string, comma, nine characters, then that, the empty string is still the empty string. That didn't really change anything. It's the comma that we put there that caused it to move over. And so that's why this now works out is pretty cool. Okay. Now, great. We've sort of got it so that the pattern is clear. What can we do with that? Well, whenever you see a pattern like this, a kind of re repetition, you want to think, can I extract that into a function so that I don't repeat it over and over again? Because essentially, we're repeating the same idea five times here, okay? And if we can figure out what the relationship is between this number and that number, then we could pull this out into its own function and avoid that repetition. And the nice trick here is, and this is not super obvious, this takes some practice to get used to being able to see these kinds of things, but it turns out that if we look at 4 and 1, 3 and 3, 2 and 5, 1 and 7, 0 and 9. In each instance, 
2 times this num uh, the first number, the number of spaces, plus the number of characters is always 9. So our invariant, and that's a fancy word for the thing that's true every time, is that tw twice the number of spaces plus the number of characters is always 9. 2 times 4 plus 1 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 is 9. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 7 is 9. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 9 is 9. So every line has this property that twice the number of spaces plus the number of characters needs to be 9. And in some ways, this is not super surprising once you have, think about it the right way. If we look at our pyramid down here, on this row, there are 9 x's. On this row, if we imagine that there's another space out here, we didn't actually print it, but if there had been, we would have had two spaces and seven x's. And so it still would have added up to nine, that two times the number of spaces plus the number of characters still would have been nine. And here, if we had printed these two spaces out on the end, twice the number of spaces, two plus two is four, plus the number of characters, five, should still give us a total of nine characters in each row. So that's our invariant, that if we know how many spaces we need to print, we can compute the number of characters using this fact. So um, this means if we need num, oops, num spaces, spaces, Right. If this is the name, we're kind of doing an algebra problem here. If this is our name for the number of spaces, then the number of characters is 9 minus 2 times the number of spaces. Because the number of characters plus twice the number of spaces has to be 9. So turn the algebra around a little bit. We get that the number of characters is 9 minus 2 times the number of spaces. And we can use that now to create a new function. So we can um, create a function up here, which I'll call def pyramid line, that's going to take two arguments. It's going to take how many spaces do we want and what character are we printing. So we have def, like always when we define a function, name of the function, which is pyramid line. I could use whatever I want. I just use the you know, use that. Then we need what pieces of information we're going to pass in. Well, we're going to tell it how many spaces we need and what character we want to print. And given that, we can capture one of these and say, well, let's first compute the number of characters. And that by our invariant down here, which I'm actually going to move up and make a comment attached to this um, function. So the number of characters is going to be 9 minus 2 times the number of spaces. And then I can print the number of spaces times space, comma, the number of characters times char. And I don't have space defined here, so if I do this as is, it's going to break. So I'm actually going to steal this line here. Copy, paste, put that up there. And now if I save and load this, I should be able to say pyramid line 0x. And I get a bunch of x's. If I say instead um, 3x, I get three spaces, three x's, and then implicitly the other three spaces. But notice it's centered nicely. If I say pyramid line 
say um, two x, right? Then I get five spaces, and again, everything's centered nicely. And so I can use that to, instead of saying this five different times, and essentially having to do this math five times, now we've done the math in one place. So if the math changes, we don't have to change it in five different places. If we decide, oh, we want, instead of a pyramid with a base of nine, we want a pyramid with a base of 13, we'd have to go in here and change a bunch of stuff on every one of these lines. Now we would only have to make a change basically right here would be the only place that we would have to change something. So that we've taken that logic, what, what's the relationship between the number of spaces and the number of characters, we captured it in one place in this new function pyramid line. We can now use that to say, instead of all these print statements, we could say pyramid line for char, pyramid line three char, pyramid line two char, pyramid line one char, pyramid line zero char and then we can get rid of those guys we can save that load our program try typing pyramid x hey it still works and if we wanted to pyramid i don't know pound sign it works so we're still getting our nice pyramids but now this relationship between how many characters do we need to print that's all captured up in here, so we don't need to think about it anymore on each of these lines. We just say, how many spaces do we want and what character are we printing in the middle? And then this does all the work, okay? Now there's one last improvement that I'm gonna make. Oh, actually, there's two, one little one and then one substantial one. Notice that I still got this space equals line. I don't need that here anymore because we never refer to space directly here that's been captured up here as well. So I can get rid of that and save and load just to make sure everything works. Um, yay, a pyramid of S's. Okay, now one other substantial change I wanna make. This is great, okay? But we are still repeating pyramid line, pyramid line, pyramid line, pyramid line, pyramid line. It's, it, feels repetitious. Certainly when you type it, it's like, oh my God, I'm just typing the same thing over and over again. And when you find yourself typing the same thing over and over again in computer land, that's probably a bad sign. And there's probably a better way to do it. Um, and so we, in this case, we are going to use a for loop to do this five times instead of us having to type it five times. We'll just type it once and the for loop will put the right value in here for the number of characters. So the for loop will call this with four, and then with three, and then with two, and then with one, and then with zero, and we won't have to repeat it over and over again. So um, a simple approach might be for i in range zero to five, pyramid line i char. And that would say, do this with zero, then with one, and then with two, and three, and four, and then stop. Because if we look at range zero, five, we get zero, one, two, three, four. And so this for loop here, F O R, not F O U R, this for loop here is going to do this, the body of the for loop one, two, three, four, five times. The first time I'll be zero, the second time I'll be one, the third time I'll be two, then three, then four. And so that will actually work, but it won't do the right thing. So if we load that up and try it out, pyramid X, we actually get an upside down pyramid because the number of spaces is going from zero to one, to two, to three, to four. So the number of spaces is going up, so that 
lines of X's or sevens or whatever you put in is getting narrower every time. So our pyramid is going the wrong way. And there's a couple of ways we can fix this. Um, the easiest one, perhaps, so let's actually, if we redo range, 0, 5, that gives us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And what we wanted was 4, 2, 3, 1, 0. Well, we could say 4 minus i everywhere. Oops. And 4 minus 0 would be 4. 4 minus 1 would be 3. 4 minus 2 would be 2. 4 minus 3 would be 1. 4 minus 4 would be 0. So that would give us the values in reverse order. And so that ought to actually work. And indeed, it does. Now, an alternative, and that probably, well, I don't know, that's a reasonable way to have done it, right? And, and I think we could stop there. But an alternative would be to get range to give us the values we want in the order we want. And it turns out that range takes two arguments. If you give it two arguments, it goes from the first one up to, but not including the second one. And it adds one every time. Okay, so we could say, oops, range 5, 27. And we go 5, 6, 7 up to 26, one less than the end point. Okay, um, and that might seem counterintuitive, but it turns out that's actually a nice thing um, because you can do things like range 0 to 5 and range 5 to 10. And those two lists, if you join them together, would give you range 0 to 10. Um, and if you went 0, if, if range 0, 5 went 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then that wouldn't happen. You'd end up with two fives. Um, so this actually works out nicely in some various ways. We won't talk about that more here at the moment, but it is actually a good thing. However, we can provide range with another argument, which tells it how much to add each time. So if I put a three there, instead of going for five, six, seven, it goes five plus three is eight, plus 11, plus three is 11, plus three is 14, and then it ends at the largest value that isn't more than um, 27. So if I said range five, 27, 10, it would end at 25. That's the biggest value that isn't 27 or higher. Um, so we get 5 plus 10 is 15, plus 10 is 25, plus 10 is 35. 35 is too big, so it would stop. We can use this to actually make ranges go backwards. So we can say range 5, 27. Uh, well, okay, let's try this. Um, and you think, well, maybe that'll work, right? That would go... Uh, the right direction. It would go backwards instead of forwards. Well, it doesn't work because 5 minus 1 is uh, going the wrong way, and we would actually never hit 27, right? So that would be possibly an infinite list. Some bad things would happen. So we actually need to say 27, 5 minus 1. And that will, again, start at the first value, Add this increment, in this case subtracting one, until we get down to, but do not reach, the second argument. So this goes down to six, but not five. We can use that to get range four. Let's try this first. And that's almost right. We wanted four, three, two, one, zero. And we get four, three, two, one. And that's because if we subtract one from here, we hit this, and we're not allowed to hit this. Um, we go two, but don't touch that second argument. So actually, that gives us the range that we want. So we start at four, we subtract one every time, and we stop when we reach negative one. So the last one we get is zero. So we could put that up here as our range, four minus one minus one, and then we can get rid of this math here, just have i, 
Save, load, Pyramid X. Woohoo! Pyramid. Oh, I don't know. I. Woohoo! And it works! And so now Pyramid, instead of being this highly repetitious piece of code that we started with, has been simplified down. And simplify, right, that requires that you understand what four does. It understands how you how range works. So to say it's simpler is in the eye of the beholder in important ways. But um, if we understand those things, this is a much simpler approach. We have a for loop, so we don't repeat ourselves over and over again. And we have this new function pyramid line, which is up here, which captures the math in the relationship between the number of characters, and the number of spaces. So that's sort of put in one place. And now if we wanted to, like I say, change the size of the pyramid, we could do that fairly easily. Okay. And if we wanted um, the lines to grow faster, we could do that in various ways. So there's been a lot more flexibility here. So I hope that makes sense. If you got questions, uh, leave comments below. Uh, thank you very much. We'll talk to you later.